what I tell artists that the biggest opportunity for you is not in museums and it's not in art galleries, okay? It's in people's homes. Hi everyone, welcome to The Empire, where we engage and interview people from, oh, sirens in the back, very fun. <laughs> where we engage and interview with people from pastors to actors, rappers to trappers, and everybody in between. My name is Antonio Lee Miles, yes, your host for today, and we have another amazing, great guest. But before we get into it, you also know the deal, like the video, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Uh, and I heard that if you say things three times that people follow. So like, 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 subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. If you want to support, dollar sign, T-H-E-E, -E, Empire Podcast, three times on Cash App. And other than all that blah, blah, blahness that I have to plug and do so that way you guys can, you know, if you want to support, support that way. <laughs> but we appreciate everybody who's here, who's supporting and who's listening. And so enough of me rambling, you know, some people actually do like 10 minutes up front of rambling before they mm -hmm. get to the guests and it kind of blows my mind. Uh, but those guys are, they're doing all right. Uh, but we coming right up, right behind them shortly. So let me introduce our esteemed guest for today. An artist, an entrepreneur, a philanthropist, and so much more than just that. A wonderful husband as well, I just found out. <laughs> Married for 90 years. <laughs> Um, his name is Mr. Charles Bibbs. Welcome to the Empire, Charles. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thanks for inviting me. So glad to have you. So glad to have you. Um, how's your day been? Oh, busy. Busy? busy. We've been uh, on a sort of like a breakaway for the last two or three days. And, uh, and we say, as well, a good finale for our weekend would be to spend it with you. Oh, man, I'm honored. I'm honored. <laughs> And we have Elaine, his lovely wife, here with us today, yeah, too. Yeah, um, My bodyguard. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> and I will always love you. Yeah. Um, that's awesome. You know, it, it, um, what do they say? Equally yoked? I think oh, biblical, I'm thinking most, biblically. Most definitely. Thinking biblical scriptures. I, I was really blessed. I was blessed. Um, and so how was the, the whole busy trip? How was that for you? Oh, this weekend? Yeah. Oh, great. Great. We got a lot, of, lot accomplished, me and her. And, um, and uh, we enjoyed it. We enjoyed it. We went to a very special place out in Temecula and just enjoyed it the whole time. Lovely. Yeah. Lovely. Um, I hear, is Temecula like a wine? Like, well, they have a lot of, a lot wine, of wine, right? Yeah. yeah. And I'm a wine connoisseur and love it. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Um, my friend was telling me about, um, they call it like wine tastings or like wine. Yeah. Like, like yeah, some, a lot of fun. He was, I remember he told me he was like, um, it's a completely different world and going to like the bar yeah you know oh, most definitely like people are it's more like a sophisticated it's a social uh, yes thing as opposed you know? and, and you get different type of people than you would get oh, going to a bar goodness. you meet so many interesting people at, at the winery you mm -hmm. know because they go they come there for the same things and they're basically from the same environment you know okay. uh, so uh, i'm finding that there are a lot of creative people oh. enjoy uh, the wineries and, and, and that inspire uh, that inspiring environment. Gotcha. Do you have a favorite type of wine? Oh, Merlot. Merlot? Yeah. Th that's a dry one, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. It takes a while to get used to the dry if you're not yeah. like a, yeah. if you're not a, a wine connoisseur, right? Right, right. right. Like, but I enjoy tasting all kinds of wines. So, okay. Yeah. Nice. Uh, different vineyards, okay. And especially, we have a few uh, black-owned vineyard, vineyards, too. Really? So. Out in Temecula? Not out in Temecula, okay. but up in the, the wine countries in California. Really? Yeah. You want to give some of them or shout some of their uh, names out for us? Well, Elaine, you know of any? I think... Sterling. Sterling. Sterlings. Yes. All right. Shout out to yeah. you, Sterlings. Yeah. Um, Mr. Bibbs, uh, for all of us who don't know, who may not know who you are uh -huh. and what you do, can you please tell all of us who you are and what you do? I am an, a contemporary African-American visual artist, okay? And that basically explains it all. Contemporary means um, basically normal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, at African-American, I'm black and uh, 
contemporary means just about anything you can think of in the art, in the field of art, visual arts, okay? I mainly concentrate on my culture, who I am, okay? If I'm gonna paint, if an artist is gonna paint about anything, he needs to know what he's painting about. And definitely, I know my people. And that's what I paint about. I paint stories about our glorious culture and who we are as a people. Awesome. Yeah. And I'm certain, and we're definitely evolving, you know, very quick. You know, um, that gets me thinking because I think it's an unfortunate thing that for, for some reason, black, young black Americans um, don't know much of their history. Mm -hmm. Like even like 50 years ago, they wouldn't yes. even know. I remember I was watching something and someone asked uh, a young kid, they said, do you know who Martin Luther King is? Mm -hmm. And they said, um, didn't he free the slaves? <laughs> right. And um, what school was this? <laughs> I, I don't know, but it's just like, you know, or I'm like, hey, do you guys know, do you know who Thelonious Monk is? Uh -huh. They're like, I don't know, is he a religious person or something? Uh -huh. You know, like I could even go back to, um, do you know who um, uh -huh. Maurice White is? And it, uh -huh. they just, we just don't know, and it's uh, um, it's just unfortunate. So, yeah, I think um, I think it's crucial that you know. I I think it's crucial that us Black Americans should know our history. And what's cool about artwork paintings mm -hmm. is that it basically um, gives us a historical representation on canvas. Yes. You know, and, and I love that. Yes. You know, and you mentioned something that you're a contemporary artist that meant uh -huh. that you said that means you're normal. Right. So if you're not a conventional artist, you're, or if you're not a contemporary artist, you're not normal. That's right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get in trouble for that, but I, okay. <laughs> I said it. It's already been said. It's already been said. Um, yeah. Cause you know, you know, artists is, you know, as artists is, we get a, yeah. those guys are weird. We get, yeah. we get that rep a lot. Oh yeah. I, I get that all the time. Uh huh. Yeah. Being weird. Yeah. But what's and, weird? But different. Yeah. Different. And see, and, and I, and I accept that. Yeah. Because the success in anything you, you endeavor to, if you want to be truly successful, you have to be different. Okay. Okay. You see where, what direction everybody's going? And you go the other direction and you make that work. Okay. Okay. And then you become a new phenomena or a new way of seeing things. Okay. And I, I kind of treated the artwork the same way, but I, I did it in a way that made more sense, more sense than most artists because I am a businessman. Okay. We'll get into that too. Yeah. I'm a businessman first. And then I apply my business acumen to my art. And, that's the, and that separated me from most arts, okay, because when I was growing up, my dad came to me and asked me, son, what do you want to be? And I told him an artist. And he says, son, I hate to tell you, the only artist I know is a starving artist. Yeah. He says, don't be that one. So he didn't discourage me of being an artist, but mm. he says, don't be the starving artist. Mm. Okay, so I kept that in my mind all my life. Okay, and I understood things differently when I pursued that art field. I studied other artists who, who, are, who are failures versus the one who are successful. Okay, and I compare the analogy of those two. And I, I, I came up my, with my own solution and governed my whole life based on that, my own solution mm. to, to the problem of being successful as an artist. Okay, I love it. Yeah. And we're definitely going to get deeper into that. And I wanted to, oh, so you said to be different. You have to be different in order to make oh, it, yeah. right? Yeah. Do you think it should be natural or forced? It's yeah. natural. Okay, it should be natural, you, you right? You take your, na your, your differences out of yourself. Yeah. And you develop that uniqueness in you. Got you. Okay. It's just like a singer. Mm -hmm. Okay. He's got to listen to all the other popular singers. Okay. And he has to come up with something unique. Their own, okay. their own sound. Their own, their own message, their yeah. own style. Because I feel like um, a lot of what we call contemporary mm -hmm. artists nowadays, yeah. I feel like they try to be so outside of the box and so mm -hmm. different. Mm -hmm. um, but they don't connect at the same yeah. time. And I think that's a, yeah. in my opinion, I think it's more important to 
be able to connect yeah. than to try to do something so outlandish to be different. Right. I, or find a, try to find a medium ground because if you're, yeah. just, if you're doing something and no one understands it, mm-hmm. um, I guess it's a two-edged sword, which is kind of good, but then mm-hmm. it's also like... So I think the whole I think the whole purpose of art and expression uh-huh. is to express yourself, but also for people to understand and feel the expression. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. That's just my opinion about yeah. that. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Um, and so you mentioned your pops, uh-huh. right? Yeah. And so can you give us all like a brief story about how where Charles Bibbs grew up and how he lived life and how he got to the person he is today, right in front of us today? Okay. Well, it it all started right in my own home. Okay. Okay. Uh, the first thing, I, I had an experience at home where the only thing in our home was a lot of, on the walls, was a lot of family photos, okay, and a picture of a white, blue-eyed Jesus Christ. Got you. Can you give us a year? Oh, back in the uh, 40s. Okay. Okay. Um, in the early 50s. And... Um, in our household, it was a common, everyday uh, African-American household, mm-hmm. okay? And I'll, one thing that always stuck with me was the incidents between my dad and my little uh, brother. And that little, my little brother came up and, and pointed to a picture on the wall. And he says, Daddy, who's that man? And my dad says, son, sit down. Hmm. This man is a very special man. And it was a picture of Martin Luther King. Okay. Okay. And he was able to get in a dialogue with my, my, my brother about this man's history through a picture on the wall. From that moment, it taught me the power of images. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. On the walls in homes. And that's where I started my whole journey to where mm-hmm. I am today. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So I guess we'll, we're going to fast forward all through the foundations, right. how you d- decided mm-hmm. where you went to school and everything yeah. like that. Okay. Um, so did you go to school at all? Did you get any formal I training? Went to, I went to, I took a lot of formal training in business. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, I wasn't that thrilled about the acclimate and the, and the teaching of art in institutions. Okay. Okay, because I always had it in my mind. I was basically self-taught. Okay. So, but I made a decision, a conscious decision, that in order to be successful, what I saw in artists and that whole notion of starving artists, mm-hmm. that they didn't have the ability to take that skill and formulate it in a way where it fit into our economy. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You know, they were always at the mercy of others. Okay. Mm-hmm. Peddling on street corners and stuff like that. Uh, if you were, if you were lucky enough, you got a contract in a major uh, studio or something like that, but it was very rare mm-hmm. because there, it was just too many artists to fulfill the, that, that demand. So I, took the liberty to go into corporate America, okay? Even though I had this great art, God-given gift to create, I wanted, so, I wanted more than that, okay? Yeah. I wanted to be a self-man and use my own God-given gift the way I wanted to go, not p- pander to somebody else. Yeah. So I went out and I learned corporate America. I, I had jobs. Okay, Elaine can attest to that. At four major corporations where I spent at least five years each and learning, you know, the food industry, the toy industry, the aircraft industry, okay? Learning all those principles of business, okay, through practical experience, not teaching, okay? Yeah. And then I gradually broke away from that and used those same principles I learned to adapt it to my art career. And to be successful. Yes. To be not a starving artist. Yes. And to be a not a starving artist. Um, you know, um, I was watching something and it said that, I guess, maybe the early 40s, that um, 
black Americans were not buying black art at the time. Is this yeah. a true thing? Yeah, I, mean, I can tell you a story about that. Let's I talk about it, it please. Let's talk about it, please. Okay. Uh, media. Okay. The, the, the strongest voice in America is media, whether radio or TV. Mm-hmm. Okay. Bill Cosby, say what you say, one about Bill Cosby. Bill Cosby single handedly started the a- black African American art movement. Wow. Through his program, The Cosby Show. Okay. What it, di- what it typified to us, what it visualized to us as a people, was a middle class family, a, black, a lawyer, and a doctor. And a doctor. Mm-hmm. Okay. Parents, house full of kids. Yeah. And art on the walls that look like them. Yes. Okay. Now, here's where the power comes in. It showed me as an artist the power I willed in my hands. Because I looked at those artwork on the walls as mine. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I looked at it as an opportunity. But this is what happened. One of my close friends, Varnett Honeywood, very, very famous artist. Okay. African-American artist. She calls me up because her work was used on the Cosby show. Oh, wow. She says, Charles, get your butt down here right away. <laughs> I got in the car. This is the went, East Coast, right? No, it's right here in Los Angeles. Really? She's okay. in South Central LA. Okay. 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 And I went down to her house and walked into her room and there was a stack of prints this high. Okay. And her whole family was rolling those prints, putting them in tubes, and shipping them out to people all over the United States. Wow. The Cosby studio started getting these inundated calls from African Americans across the United States wanting to be like the Cosbys. Hmm. They wanted to have those things, those pictures on their walls. Cosby single handedly started a revolution in African American art. Yeah. Okay. And the rest wow. is history. That whole movement made me and a thousand other artists like me. Wow. Yeah. From our own people wanting to, our, to, to gravitate towards our own culture, to want to have images on their walls that looked at, like them. Gotcha. You know, not that example I told you about when, my, when, I, when I grew up. Yeah, with Jesus with the blue eyes yeah. and the blonde hair. <laughs> yeah. Um, wow, it's so... Um, <laughs> I have to thank you, Bill Cosby, for the amazing work you've done because he is really... Yeah, and he wasn't the only one. Good times with uh, J.J. Yeah. All right? J.J. was a black artist growing up in a okay. household. Okay. Okay, that started it too. Then all the other sitcoms that came along after that started putting the, uh, home environments, okay, did the same thing. And it just went one after another. For about at least uh, the, the next 20 years, that's what it was all about. And here's the thing that uh, I want to tell your audience. Please. The, the, the biggest thing now for us as artists is the walls in people's homes. Okay. That's our end product. That's where it's going to end up. Okay. Now, you can imagine, this is how I, I, cha- I train business for artists to get them inspired because they didn't know all these, these things, these, in these, uh, these profound, uh, business attributes of our business. And that is the walls. Okay. The walls is where your art lives. Okay. Can you imagine how many walls, all the, all the houses in America. Okay. And all the bedrooms and living rooms. Businesses. Businesses. Those are opportunities. Yeah. Enormous opportunities, but we never thought that way. Okay. And so that was a big emphasis in an artist becoming artists from that point on because of the opportunities. Okay. Enormous, just billions of op- ways that you can formulate your business and use your God given gift to support yourself. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's all you have to do is plug in. I okay. love it. Yeah. And connect. And connect. Um, I, I saw a quote, I believe that you said it, and I think it's, it was called uh, keep, Keepers of Our Culture, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Is, uh, is it still happening? Oh, yeah. Yes? Yeah. We're, we're part of that, 
you know, the, like the music industry, the writing industry, the things that we do to, to profound us as a people, to, to, to let, let the world know that we exist, is in our arts. It's the way we express ourselves, the way we sing, the way we worship our God. Okay. Okay. All those things are, per, are special. And that's what, you, that's what we're selling. Okay. Yeah. And, and the thing about it, there's, you, you think you have exhausted every way to do a thing. Okay. But that's where creativity comes in. Okay. 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 Right. When you think you've exhausted everything and you 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 mimic every, whatever everything that you say was successful and you've done that and you say, what, what left is there? Well, you got to dig deep. Hmm. OK, that's why I gave you God gave you a creative mind. Yes. To find those other ways to do things. And that's why we keep inventing things. OK. And art is no no different, you know, yeah. you, and, and using that creative mind is what the human uh, aesthetic is all about, okay? And that's why we keep evolving, okay? And there's always stories to paint about. Yes. You know? Yes. Uh, so I, I got heavily into civil rights and painting, and that was a, that was a key to my success, mm-hmm. okay? When, when Obama became the first president, I did, I did a lot of com- profound imageries on what that meant to a culture of people, okay? The civil rights movement, you know, yeah. I did pieces on the civil rights movement. But all those things, then I did, did a lot of pieces on things that, that help us survive in our normal day because you have to understand that art has a subconscious connection. Oh, wow. It's affecting you when you don't even notice. Yeah. Okay? Yep. And just in our society, if you, if you see a stop sign, what do you do? Got to stop. All right. And it's a visual thing. Yeah. Okay? Red is always going to mean caution to you. Mm-hmm. Okay? So art does the same thing. So if there is a picture in your home, you think you're, you think you're not paying attention to it, but your mind is. Okay? Subconsciously. Just making a subconscious connection. Yeah. So that's the power of art. It's always working. Okay, Mm -hmm. and that's why it's important to have those type of things in your homes, the things that make you feel good. Okay, that's all you have to do is put it up. Yes. And you know, and and you really don't have to really consciously pay attention to it because it's all always working on you. Mm -hmm. It's there. Okay, it 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 fulfills your environment and and identifies who you are. I love it. Yeah. And you know, for keepers of our culture, do you Mm -hmm. think the next generation understands this concept and is doing it? Yeah. Oh yeah, we're getting we we understand that more and more and more because you you see it in the way we sing, you see it in the way we praise our God, and all these things are artistic expressions, okay? Okay. Our poetry, okay. Our writings, okay. The way we talk mm-hmm. <laughs> to mm-hmm. each other, yes, <laughs> almost yeah. in code, yes, <laughs> yes. See, all those things are artistic to me. Are artistic expressions. Okay. Okay. And people take art for granted, but art, art, art changes you every day. It affects you every day, and you yeah. don't even know it. Yeah. You know. Mm-hmm. You know. If, if, if this this piece right, uh, marching in the spirit, which you're going to show you, um, if you had that in your home, you talk, you worry about your kids learning their history. Put that in your home. There you go. Okay. And then you can tell a story, in one picture. Okay, about the civil rights movement. Yes, sir. And everything that happened in that. And that and that kid will come back to that and make his own judgments on it, just on a picture. Okay? And you worried about schools doing anything? You know, yes, there are some some problems where we have to take second seat on our history. Yeah. But you can adjust that by having things in your homes, like books. Yeah. That explains. So we don't have we don't have any excuses. We don't have to rely on the educational system. Yeah. We can educate ourselves. Yeah, we can do it ourselves. So, yeah, books, art, imageries, read. Come on. Mm. <laughs> um, Charles, when you're creating your pieces, uh, um, do you already envision the whole complete piece, or does it kind of develop while you're painting? I, it? I, I have a I have a concept in my mind. Okay. Okay. But it, it materializes as I progress. 
Okay. You start finding more bits and pieces. It's like a scattered puzzle. Okay. And then you know what the puzzle is supposed to look like at the end, and you start putting it all together. Okay. Yeah. And then you really see what, what the end result is. It's in your mind. It's already there. Mm-hmm. But um, you can get distracted, and then you have to break away from it. And then it's like a, it's like a, the creative process is like an exhaustible fuel. Yes. Okay. Yes. So you can run low, then you have to get back and replenish and then come back to it. And then all of a sudden you got answers. Uh-huh. Okay. And you probably experience that in your, your everyday life. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? When you get tired of something, doesn't mean that you're through with it. You just need to step back. Okay. Take a breather, basically. That's right. And come yeah. back to it. So the creative process works that way. Got you. I know you mentioned that, you know, you like to paint represent your paintings through the culture through the paintings Mm -hmm. but do you have any people that have other artists that have influenced you or any inspirate inspirations yeah yeah a a lot of me i mean all all the classics the 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 great artists that have come before me uh jacob lawrence bearden lois malibu jones all those people uh a lot i had the opportunity to meet him and um and talk to uh, I really thank God that I had that experience, and um, but um, those those are just uh, signposts in li- in life that okay. you that you notice, but you still have to make your own way. Mm-hmm. You you know, people who have gone before us have done their job. Yes. Now it's up to you in, in a new environment, okay, to make your own mark, okay. The only thing is that they were able to do it during their time. You can't adapt what, how they did it to your time because it's, ho- it's totally different. Yes. You have to come up with new concepts and procedures to do that. So, but the thing is, they were able to do it. That encourages you, you to do it, do the same. So I take, um, you know, I keep, I keep, uh, I collect a lot of art. I've got a lot of art of, of our Artists that have, that have gone on, mm-hmm. okay, and it's part of my my uh, culture, and it's part of my motivation to continue what I'm doing. Ah, okay. I love it. Yeah, it's like your battery. In yes, your back it is. Yeah, to keep you going. Right. Um, do you still uh, paint from the perspective of looking up? Yes. Yeah. To make an exaggerated, to make it right, uh, the right, exaggerated right. look. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people have made that comment that it's it's like um. Uh, my pictures are like I'm looking from from down up. Yeah. Um, and I never really uh, paid that much attention to that. But uh, but when I when I finally looked at it, and I says, yeah, that's kind of kind of weird. But uh, <laughs> I really <laughs> I really don't put too much uh, thought on it. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. I thought it was an interesting thing. I saw. I was like, okay, yeah. painting, looking up. Yeah. And I was thinking, like, okay, what is like um, I'm thinking, like to myself, like what does that mean? Like he um, admires, because you know when you're yeah. looking up at something, you admire something, or you yeah. you know you yeah. you love it, or you you know you're inspired by right. it, or you adore it. And so I'm thinking, like oh, okay, maybe mm-hmm. he's like a, adoring <laughs> these creatures that yeah. I'm I'm just gonna assume adoring these creatures that are that have been godly sent. Yeah, because I have this hypothesis that ideas are gifts from God, because a lot of the times. Um, you'll just be sitting and then all of a sudden you'll get a clear picture of what, of what to express. Yeah. And it just comes out of nowhere. It does. And, and the, only, <laughs> the only thing that makes sense is that nothing can really manifest out of nothing. Something has to, well, in my opinion, something has to be given to you. And I look at it, these ideas as gifts from God. And, yeah. and through uh, the free will that we have, right. we have the choice to either follow the gift right. or not. And I think when the gift or the idea is... Um, needs to come to this earth. If you don't uh, manifest it, then yeah. he'll give it, God will give it to someone else who will. Right. 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 And, I, and God allows you to experience things because a, a, a lot of artists, whether they're writers, uh, composers, visual artists, they get their motivation and experience from life. Yes. Okay. And there's nothing, nothing better than just to walk through it Mm-hmm. And it just all comes to you, okay? Uh, whether it's tragedy or whether it's fun or whether it's hope, all those things are what artists use to 
to get inspired to create, yeah. whether it's whether it's through music, uh, where, or the visual arts. So it's all it's all the same. Okay. There's no there's no difference, and the, and the motivation is all the same. Okay, this is between the two, yeah. you know, um, I think you kind of defined your style as expressing the African American experience, mm-hmm. right? But there was pieces that I I noticed, and I was kind of curious, and I think uh, this one. This piece right here behind us, mm-hmm. and also Legacy of Hope. Mm-hmm. Did you use multiple, uh, like a multimedia? Because it looks like it's painting mixed with like photography put mm-hmm. to it. Is it? Can you explain that yeah. a little bit? Well, I do a lot of mixed media. We do a lot of collaging, where you take um, strips of uh, magazines, pictures, or like that. But you, it's a it's sort of like a mixed media process. But uh, in art, there is no rules. Yeah. Okay, um, you, you can do an oil painting, okay, or you can do a watercolor. Those are strictly one, one form medias, but then you do mixed media, and mostly I do mixed media. Okay. And I can do, okay. that means I have the leverage to do whatever I want. Yeah, I do, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, and that makes the creative process more interesting and involving, okay, for me, mm-hmm. okay. So, and 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 I've 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 have taken some creative license and taken advantage, and created some things that basically have been considered new in the industry. Okay, can you give us an example? Oh, just by using uh, certain uh, visual metaphors, okay, to to say say a statement, okay. Um, like in some of the uh, storyboard pieces like this, uh, this piece right here, using newspaper articles mm-hmm. and strippings, okay, to give a, a broader picture of what my message is. Okay. 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 When I did pieces on the civil rights movements and all the tragedies in the civil rights movement and we keep marching on. There's a piece called Marching in the Spirit. Yes. Okay. I had newspaper articles to back up some of the imageries that we are all familiar with, <laughs> what happened, okay, yeah. in, our, in our history. Okay. So um, that helps tell the story. And um, so those, those kind of techniques, okay, it, um, it's picked up by, for, for other artists. Okay, um, art has no boundaries. Okay, so basically you can use just about, you can break, if there's rules to break, break them in the mm-hmm. arts. And, and that's with any, any, any art form, uh, but you have to do it in a way where it makes sense. Yeah. Okay, can't break the rules and fail. You gotta Uh-oh. break the rules and succeed. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> so it's all a message, it's all messaging. Okay, a piece will do better if it, when it communicates. Okay, when people can read it and understand it. Okay, or they can come up with their own meaning for it. And a lot, we have a lot of situations like that. Yeah, where I look at somebody tell me about my piece of work, and I says I never saw saw it that way. That's interesting. Okay, yeah. but that's possible too. Their interpretation. Yeah, I love that. Right. I love that. You know, um, it's funny because. When Beethoven mm-hmm. uh, came out, not the dog, by the mm-hmm. way, yeah. um, the, com- the composer, uh, he broke a lot of rules and his music at the time was like so difficult. Right. And now um, it's considered like standard. There you go. You know, so it's so interesting, like breaking the rules, right. but becoming standard. And, you know, I love uh, looking at your pieces, like the variety, like I really love the, the colors that come out and like... The Adorning Glory 2 mm-hmm. and um, the Funk Explosion, like the colors that you use. I'm just like, wow, this is fantastic. Mm-hmm. And then um, I had like this, um, um, I had the this feel of this country vibe when I saw uh, Hat's Nest, mm-hmm. you know, watching that one. And then I, there was two pieces that gave me kind of like Oriental Asian influence. Uh-huh. And one of them was the Purple Umbrella. Uh-huh. And then the other one, I can't remember, mm. but I think it was um, mm. 
a lady sitting down with like mm-hmm. a mandala playing mm-hmm. and you could see koi fish in yeah. her uh, dress uh-huh. and then uh-huh. some of the swans and the guitar uh-huh. kind of look like dragons and it just uh-huh. kind of showed like a, uh-huh. for me, like an uh-huh. Asian kind of uh, uh-huh. inspiration. Uh-huh. Am I on? Am I off? Uh, no, you're right on. Okay. Because in our society, <laughs> we use nature to embellish the things that we wear and the things that we take put in our everyday lives, okay? Mm-hmm. Uh, our wallpaper, furnishing, okay? Everything it has is taken, a lot of things are taken from nature. So yes. in my art, I do the same thing. I put, I put nature into it to express the glory of a woman, the beauty of a woman. Okay. Okay. So um, then I do pieces on the black men. Yeah. Okay. And I do the same thing with that to embellish who, their, their, their power. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I've done one thing that I've, you never can say everything in one piece. So I was one of the artists that came up with the sequels. But see, sequels was something that came in the movie industry. Okay. And, then, okay. and I was one of the first artists to start using sequels because cool. I learned from Rocky. Okay. Rocky one. Sylvester Stallone. Two, yeah. Okay. Three. And I says, man, if you do one great thing, he multiplied it by five. Okay. Why can't I do that in the arts? And I did it. And then before you know it, it became a standard thing. Mm-hmm. Artists started doing sequels. I did um, uh, a piece, uh, uh, my women series. And I will always do about a sequel of five. Following the Rocky standard. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so at a lot of my pieces, if I'm successful at one, I'll do a sequel to follow that. Okay. Because I have a lot, a lot of pieces that sell out. So mm. I may put an addition of a thousand in the first, sell okay. all a thousand, then I go to the second sequel, and each one I'm selling a thousand. So that by the time I finish the five five sequels. I've sold 5,000 units. Okay. Okay. See, that's an economic thing. I didn't, I didn't learn in an art class, an yeah. art room. I learned in business. Okay. Yeah. And the, the power of sequels. You do thing one, a good thing once and do it again. Yeah. But, you know, change it up every time. But the same thing every time. I see. What's yeah. your favorite Rocky? Uh, five. Five? The last one. <laughs> yeah. I haven't seen any of them. <laughs> I saw Creed a little bit, but that was about yeah. it. Um, you know, you've you've been a part of and created several foundations. Mm-hmm. Um, can you tell me why is it so important? It's it's important to give back. Okay, now the way I give back, um, one thing I I I noticed something about the african-american art uh, movement Mm -hmm. okay and i learned that every movement okay in black history had a magazine like ebony like ebony okay and then we always the glorified black beauty in the hair we had three or four black magazines that glorified our black women, Mm -hmm. okay? We had a magazine that told stories, profound stories in our communities, like Ebony and and so on, Yeah. okay? But I I know if there's a movement, you have to have a collective way of communicating that movement, okay? If Mm -hmm. you don't, you're uh, you're just a mess. You're just a whole bunch of individuals scattered all over the place with no, no conscious of anything going on and how to go after it, okay. okay, in an organized fashion. So that's what happened to the African-American art movement, okay? There was no place where people can pick up a book and say, what's going on in the, in the movement? So I was one of the first artists to come up with a magazine. I called it Images. Okay. okay. Mm-hmm. And we published this images magazine for about three to four years until we started getting other magazines start coming on. Okay. 
I follow the example of a, of a great woman called Samella Lewis, okay? Mm -hmm. She was the first artist to represent African-American artists, okay? Wow. But hers was more, more academic, okay? So I wanted to do something that will represent more than just academia artists. Okay. Okay. Those grassroots artists just coming out of the community. Okay. With, with little hope, but then, but looking for great aspirations to be great. Okay. How do we get those artists who have tremendous talent, but may not have the where to all to get a degree somewhere. Okay. So I went after those, those, that market and it was a big market. Okay, and we were able to support major expos across the United States, like the New York Art Expos. We wow. were one of the first, that was the biggest art expo in the United States, but no black representation. We hmm. were the first to be there to represent African American art wow. in a big way. Okay, so that type of organization. I wasn't just an artist for myself. Okay, my wife can contest you that, mm -hmm. that we worked hard to represent all artists, African-American artists, mm -hmm. okay? Because it was no way that if I'm successful, if I can't pull up my brothers and sisters and show them the way, okay? So that's what we did, we actively did. We spent a lot of money in supporting other artists. Uh, I had an art organization, a membership, Okay, where artists can come together and we share information to them across the United States. I got, I mean, most of my, most of the artist friends I have are not local artists. Okay. They're all over the United States. They're scattered across. I, I mean, we pick up the phone. I can talk to somebody in Baltimore, New York, Dallas. We all know each other. Okay. Okay. And it's the greatest thing. You, I mean, that type of camaraderie is, is it's best and it's better than your own community mm. when you have a community that's wor that's worldwide or nationally national wide. Agreed. And that's what we have right here in the United States. Most of the artists, like myself, we know each other. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, you mentioned like um, the power of imagery, mm. right? And Bill Cosby and the Cosby Show showing positive imageries of yes. Black Americans. Yes. What's your opinion on how popular culture is showing the images of black Americans today. Oh, that is profoundly impaired because it economically, it, it works. Okay. Because all that kind of comes together and our support of each other. Okay. We get a lot of attack as black people. We're constantly bombarded with criticisms about us, mm -hmm. but we are, we're so solid together is because our music is about us, okay? Our art is about us, okay? And there's a reason for that, is because we, we're ostracized so much, okay? That helps us blend together and have that inner power, power support. Mm -hmm. When we sing, we sing about our own experience, okay? In love and, and, and family. Yes. Okay, when we paint, we paint about our own experience and those things, okay? That's our glue that keeps us together, our art. What we sang about in church, I mean, I mean, I mean, just think if it wasn't for our, our coming together at church, that tradition, yes, okay, where would we be? And that tradition of, 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 represent ourselves in our, in our songs, in our everyday life, and in our paintings, in our everyday lives, and in the way we talk, maintaining that one way we talk that nobody else understands. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> but us, you know? Yeah. And we have, and we have, and, and that is so precious to us. Gotcha. Okay. And that's, that's what, that's to me, is our culture. That's art. That's our art. Okay. Okay. So and, do you think, I'm sorry. Yes. Um, I was going to ask, do you think the imagery, because you know, a lot of imagery, well, in my opinion, seeing a lot of imagery that's like girls shaking their butts mm -hmm. and like, 
gang culture do you think that's still like positive imagery well, for black americans well i See? think i think it's it comes out of desperation but it's not finalized i think it's just like you know in culture the behavior you know get goes astray but it all in the end comes back together okay okay yeah we have some some elements in our culture that's violent okay but I think it's, it's, it's a learning tool also. Yeah. And it helps brings, bring us back together. Okay. So nothing's perfect in life. True. Okay. Mm -hmm. It all starts out as trying to be good. Okay. But then there's a lot of elements foreign to us that comes in and inflicts upon a, a, a community and cause those por portions to go astray. But... There's always ways of mending, mm -hmm. okay? And the glory of, of culture, okay, is that we all try to mend, okay? You know, we don't let things get totally out of hand. You know, there's always elements where we gotta, we gotta reel that in, we gotta reel that in. We, so I don't, I don't get discouraged when I hear a lot of negativity in the African-American culture. Okay. Because I know there's uh, there's uh, there's stronger elements that are going to correct those. Okay. okay. Yeah. If we're not bothered, because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. because only us can fix it. True. No one's okay. going to help us. No. <laughs> Can't be waiting on Superman. Right. Um. You know. Um. You you help a lot of people become business minded. Yes. Young adults and probably yeah. people of all ages. Yeah. How do you? How do you pick the people that need the guidance and what do you usually help guide them on? Like what's some of the tri tricks? Well, you, you said examples. Okay. Sometimes you don't have to really seek out people to train. They see you. Okay. Okay. And they'll come to you. How did you do this? Okay. How do you maintain your, your exposure in this business? Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and that information is free. We don't, okay. we don't harbor that, you know, because what, I, know, I know some artists or some people don't want to share. <laughs> it's almost like they think they're losing something, okay, by doing that. But I think it's there for the taking anyway. That's all you have to do is read. Yeah. Okay, the most of the things that I've learned is because of I, I, I sought the answers, okay? Yeah. I saw the examples, and picked up the phone and called people, okay, and got confirmation on what, how they're doing things. Okay. And, and you always validate everything, okay? Um, so How do we, you validate? How do you validate? Just by doing checking. Okay. Doing your own uh, evaluation, doing your own research. Okay. That's how you validate it, okay? I mean, are you really doing this this way? I mean... Let me, let me find out. Let me go in there and check. Let me uh, call some people, okay? Somebody says that somebody is uh, looking for talent, okay? Okay, well, let's, let's, find, let's, let's research and see what that, see, is that going to lead to an opportunity, okay? So you start seeking out these different opportunities. And then you want to create, you can create movements of your own. So I, I was, I've been able to do that too. Okay. Okay. Can you give us a couple of examples of some movements? Oh, well, artists to, artists to take things that are, that are profoundly informational in our, in our community and, and do art on it. Okay. Okay. It's not, it's not enough to paint a, a beautiful picture of a wet bouquet of flowers. So what? <laughs> do something that tells a story. Do something that's going to to enlighten somebody. Do something that's gonna have a subconscious impact on somebody. Do a picture of Martin Luther King and sell those and have those put in the walls to remind you of this man. Okay. Only an artist can do that. We have a place in our civil rights movement, okay? We can edify those statements that people say by doing, doing pictures of yeah. it. By doing like uh, the pieces marching in the spirits, I show the whole history of the, the civil rights movement, all those things that made us continue, all those you know events along the way. 
they were tragedies. Yeah. But because of those tragedies, we didn't quit. So I put, I pit, I pictorialized that in a picture and sold, I sold thousands of those. Okay. Because people wanted that as a reminder. Okay. Stick to who you are as an artist. Okay. You can't be nobody else. God put you on the earth, on the earth as a black man. You need to tell a black man's story. If you're a writer, write about, about who you know. Write stories about that edifies black people, their tragedies and their hopes and their victories. That's what we do as artists. And as long as we do that, there is always going to be a place in our society. And it's not free. So it's an economic power. Okay. Okay. So it edifies us. Okay. So, um, so that's, that's, that's what I teach young artists. Okay. Because, um, there are mundane ways to be an artist. Yeah. Okay. We don't want that. I don't want that. We don't <laughs> <No>. want that. <laughs> so I, I tried to make it exciting and beneficial and worthwhile. Okay. Because mm -hmm. sometimes art gets to be mundane. Okay. Yeah. But you got you to gotta think creatively. Okay. And it's basically is a very exciting position to be in. Because there is no ceiling, you can go. Okay. You can go as high as you want. Yeah. You can express your way any way you want, and find an audience. That's the that's the really uh, amazing thing about it. Okay, there there are audience for every expression. True. Okay. Yeah. And the world is full, and it's. I mean, we've been able to even travel to. Foreign countries like Japan, mm -hmm. Mexico, you know, uh, Europe with our art. So, yeah. um, and the art is about a little community in, in Watts, California, mm -hmm. you know, it could be. And it's selling someplace in, in Japan. I see. Where were yeah. you born and raised? Right here in Southern California. Okay. Not in Watts. Were you born in Watts? No. Okay. No. And uh, I was born in San Pedro, California. San Pedro, California. Raised in Harbor City, California. Okay. The Bay Area. Okay. Up north. Yeah. But, um, but Los Angeles is my stumping ground. Got you. Yeah. Because when you mentioned Watts, I thought of uh, yeah. Phil Ye, yeah. um, the comic book artist. Do you know who Phil Ye is? Yeah. Yeah. So we also had him here and he talked mm -hmm. about uh, growing up in Watts and, and stuff like that. So it yeah. just made me think about that. Yeah. Um, you know, how do you determine the value for each one of your pieces? Oh, <laughs> well, uh, there is no formula for that. Okay. Um, we do, we have, we found ways to bring the price of art down through numbers. So now I'm talking economics. Yeah. Okay. The thousand units. Right. So you can, I can have an original piece of artwork that's valued at, say, $20,000. Mm -hmm. Very few people are going to be able to afford that. Mm -hmm. And I only can sell it once. Okay. But if I take that piece that's worth 20000 and I make a thousand copies of it, okay, on paper, not on the canvas and the oil, not, not yes. an original, yes. but a reproduction, and sell it for $100 each, and do an addition of a thousand. Okay, you do the math. Hundred thousand dollars. Right, I can make a, I can make that and sell it to more people. Mm -hmm. That's where you, that's where you make income. Okay, there are some artists that can just sell originals. Very few, because the market niche for people that can afford a hundred thousand dollar painting is very small. Yeah. Okay. It's like an elite. All right. And there's a lot of us. <laughs> so to, to level that out, go after the bigger, bigger market. market. You can have the same image, have the same appeal, but lower the price by quantities. And each one is signed and numbered. Okay. So it's part of a limited edition. Okay. So I can take that $100,000 original, make a hundred copies and sell them each for a hundred dollars each. Okay. Mm -hmm. But I got a hundred people owning 
rather than one. Yeah. So do the math. So we've been able to make a living by doing multiples of originals. Yeah. Bringing the price down, keeping the value up because all those reproductions will increase in price. So it's an investment. So it may start out at $100 today. In two years, that same $100 print, because it's sold out, there is no more. Yeah. Okay. Now they can sell it for $1,000 each. Its value has risen. Right. Yeah. And that's mm -hmm. the way the art market works. Yeah. Okay. So I can have several million dollars worth of paper value versus originals. Okay. Canvas pieces. Mm -hmm. Okay. But those paper pieces, they really get the word out. And that's how you train new collectors. Those collectors that start, they start buying those limited edition prints for $100, increasing value. Then as they move up the economic ladder, they still own, they still own bibs. Yes. They want a bigger collection of bibs. They start buying the larger pieces. Originals. Mm. They start buying originals. We have a lot of original collectors now who started buying reproductions. So we groom our collectors over the years. Okay. Okay. So if you never collected art, you can start buying something as, as small as posters, postcards, mm -hmm. and things like that. Okay. And as you move up the economic ladder, you start buying, you move up with your quality of prints. Yeah. And at the same time, art always appreciates. It never depreciates. Mm. Okay. So your collection may be worth, say, 10000 when you look at it, and then 10 years is worth 100000 And you can actually exchange that, put that piece on the market, and actually sell it for that much too. I love it. that's the way the market works. Okay. Yeah. You know, I was uh, I was talking to somebody about it, and it was about Basquiat's painting. How mm -hmm. I think it sold for like a hundred million dollars. Yeah, um, he holds the record. He's so, at the okay. Yeah, a hundred a hundred and seventy million dollars for one piece of art. Well, yeah, and I just um, I guess the only part that kind of like disturbs me a little bit is right. that no one of his legacy gets a piece of that money. Do you True, understand what I'm saying? Uh, except for his family. Does his, his family get some of that piece of it? Yeah, his, his estates. Okay. Okay, it was his, all the art, his artwork went to his mother's. Okay. She's making all that money. Okay. Okay, now, okay. but the thing is, there is no more. That was it. Well, he can't, he's not around he's, to make it anymore. Yeah, of course, yeah. So, so it's all owned by major institutions. Mm -hmm. I think most of it is all exhausted. But his, his uh, sister... Is painting. Oh, interesting. And she has a last name, what? Basquiat. Uh-huh. So she could just write the Basquiat. Yeah, she's she's doing well. Okay. Okay. But see, this is the way this is the way the whole business works. And um uh the thing about it, see, and that's what I like about Basquiat. He came up, see he he dispelled all the notions that an artist has to have a PhD. To be mm. successful. Okay. This kid was from the streets. Yeah. Dead from the streets. <laughs> and he was persistent. And he had a message. And then it took one guy. Andy, was it Andy Warhol? I believe so. Yeah. Discovered him. And just said, I can make you. Got you. He did. You can call it, you call it what? He was just lucky? At the right place at the right time. Yeah. Okay. But I don't like that. I don't let that influence me. But at, the only thing about basketball, it just shows you the, how far you can go. And all these limitations that people put on you don't mean a hell of beans. Got you. Somebody tells me that you I have to have a PhD. <laughs> I says, what PhD did basketball have? Yeah. And he's the biggest. He's the biggest seller. He holds the records in Sotheby's and Christie's uh, auction houses. Okay. Okay. So there is no rules or limitations in art. If you have something great, God gives you something, 
there's no telling how far you can go. Yeah. Just on your will to achieve. Okay. There's a lot of us that are just born with greatness. Okay. I mean, an athlete just born with the abilities to, to do amazing things physically. Okay. And make millions of dollars. Yeah. Without a PhD. Okay. So these things cross relates with each other and, and confuses things on, on institutions to say that what you have to do to achieve. Yeah. Because there's always these, was those freaks yeah. out there that, that says, well, what happened here? Yeah, what about this person? Yeah. So just, it's all in the will. It's all in the will. Yeah. But I have to say, knowing makes it easier mm. when you don't have the luck or okay. the circumstances. Yeah. So you better, you better, I mean, the institutions of higher learning works. Okay. I, I will never tell anybody just to go on luck alone or uh, circumstances yeah. like bass squat. Mm -hmm. Okay. That says, if it can happen to him, then happen to you. No. Yeah. It happened to him, but it may not. The odds are it won't happen to you. Yeah. So you have to do whatever you can do to make that happen for you. Yeah. I got, I got two things that I wanted to say. And, um, one of them is I agree with you with the basketball thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I, also, I believe that um, you know, people can be lucky, but I also think you have to be prepared for right. the opportunity to be open. And I think, I think he was prepared for it. Mm -hmm. um, number two, the other thing I wanted to ask you is, in your opinion, what do you think makes someone's piece more valuable than like another, another artist's piece more valuable than another artist? Marketing. Marketing? <laughs> think it's all marketing? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, let me tell you, let me tell you, I mean, go, look at the car, the car, car uh, business. <laughs> That's a perfect example. What makes one car more valuable than the other? A lot of it's marketing. And, uh, and being in the right place at the right time. Uh, or just uh, how you present yourself. Um, how you present your product. How you sell it. Gotcha. Okay? This is America. There's, this it's, is America. It's a po the possibilities is limited. Yeah. Okay? It's all, uh, it all has to do with how creative you are. Yeah. In America, it's creativity. Okay? There is no no in, a, in America. There's always a challenge. Okay? You can do it if you have the ability to do it. Okay. Okay? Yeah. If you have the know-how to do it. That's it. Okay? But, That's it. But nothing's impossible in America. Yeah. It's the beauty of the country. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> what did Chris Rock say? He's like, um, America's kind of like growing up uh, in a beautiful household, um, but you were molested by your uncle or something like that. Uh -huh. <laughs> something along those lines. Um, and you could use that story to make a million dollars. <laughs> yeah, you know, shout out to you, Chris Rock. Shout out to you, Chris Rock, genius. Yeah, you write a story about it. You could make money. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but tragedy. I, but see... Uh, but you know what? That's that's the whole that's the whole beauty of it. Okay, um, I knew everything about creativity because I'm a creative soul. Yeah. Okay, and sometimes it's hard to show people how to be creative. Okay. Is that even possible to show someone how to be creative? Sometimes it's 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 a chore. Okay. okay. But they eventually get it. Okay. Okay, because you have to throw away the the directions that you're reading. Okay. Okay. If you just follow the directions and it doesn't work, then that's when creativity comes in. There's something that you miss that required creativity, your own mindset, and you missed it. Okay. Okay, following directions is not enough. Okay. You have to use some kind of creativity in that process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, because uh, yeah, I think create. As I get older and I start thinking about, because I think creativity is it's basically like expression, self-expression, yeah. mm -hmm. and it could be anything from like sewing, knitting. Yeah. It could be expression. Yeah. 
Um, I wanted to get back to like pricing your pieces, right? Mm -hmm. Do people still haggle you? Handle me? Haggle. Haggle? Yeah. Oh, yeah, they do. Okay. Yeah, there's always somebody that wants, wants a deal. Okay. Okay. And I don't, I don't mind doing that because that's the nature of, of sales. Okay. Okay. But if you, have, if you have something that's in demand, you don't have to do it. So in other words, we do what's called limited editions. Okay. Okay. Um, that takes out a lot of the haggling. And then it's appreciation. So in other words, if I sell something for a dollar today, yes. tomorrow it's going to be worth $10. Mm. Okay. So regardless, regardless, you're going to be able to sell that again for 10 times what you bought it from me for. Because art always appreciates. Ooh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So you buy a piece for a thousand dollars today. Okay. Elaine can tell you that people, our buyers call all the time. How much is this worth, Elaine, today? Elaine will tell her, well, that's worth 10000 right now. Yeah. Okay. Couldn't you sell it for me? Sometimes Elaine does. Sometimes she, she refers them to a gallery that can sell, sell a piece for them. Okay. Okay. But um, we go through this all the time. And the, 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 the good thing about it for us, it tells us that our appreciation is working. Okay. Okay. And so the things that we, we sell today, it's always going to go up in value. Mm. And that's the, that's the good thing about art. Yeah, it it's never, beautiful. It never, it never declines in value. It, I mean, and through all the depressions and everything in, in, our, in our history, art has always maintained its value. Okay. I haven't had a situation yet or learned of a situation where it, it did fall. That's so beautiful. That's so yeah, cool. Right. Can't say the same though for music, right? Music doesn't, uh, I guess, because it's not tangible, probably. Yeah, because, I mean, because music is easily reproduced and evolves okay. constantly. Um, but if some, I've, I've seen some vintage forms of music sell, sell for uh, increased prices, but I... And like you said, I, I, I don't see that that way because it's not tangible. Yeah, yeah. You know, mm -hmm. art is something that you can pick up. And hold. Okay, and, and hold, yeah. Put on your walls. Yeah. Put on your yeah. walls. Um, do you, well, because we talked about it a little bit earlier about, mm -hmm. or I, I guess I mentioned it, that a lot of the younger generation doesn't know people like Thelonious Monk or Miles Davis or mm -hmm. Martin Luther King. Mm -hmm. But say if I go to Europe, they know these people. They're still yeah. playing jazz. Right. Do you, have you experienced that there's more appreciation for your art overseas than there is in the United States? Or what's, what's that? No, I, we've made, we maintain purposely a United States market. Okay. Okay. And... We do have some some um, some little jots from uh, from overseas, but not much. Okay. Okay. Maintain mainly because we keep it culturally subject matter mm -hmm. about African Americans. Okay. Okay. That's our that's our that's our subject. That's all we do is African American culture. Okay. So and that's and that's what that's we that's where we like it. You know? <laughs> I'm not trying to, um, you know, we do have, we've had some dealers who were representing us who wanted to show Japan the African-American culture. Okay. But that kind of fizzled out. But okay. it was an attempt. It showed, that was a good, good attempt. Through the art. They're going to show the yeah. culture through the art. Mm -hmm. Okay. It might come back out because, you know, a lot yeah. of people love our culture. Yeah, the love that like well, the music that that's and that's worldwide. Yeah. yeah, and the dance and the dress and yeah, right. it, you you see it. Yeah, um, there's even there's like a sub. Japan has a lot of interesting subcultures. Yeah, so they have this uh, thing where girls will, will people will get tanned. Mm -hmm. They'll put perms in their hair so they get their hair curly. Yeah, they will uh -huh. they wear baggy clothes like if I, <laughs> it's um, Japan. You guys are interesting out there. You guys got some style. <laughs> Um, and, and as an artist who's been in the art world for at least 50 years, can I say, what's your thoughts on AI art? 
What's that? What's your thought on thoughts on AI art, artificial intelligence creating art? Oh, um, I haven't even thought of that. Gotcha. Okay, but uh, have you heard I, of it? I've heard of it, um, but um, I think it's going to be an isolated phenomena. I don't think it's going to touch the real thing. Okay. And it's always going to be a separation. Because maybe the more artificial things that come out, it will accelerate the real. I hope so. Because there's yeah, a. Yeah, well, look, listen. I'm listening. Artificial, real. What do you want? You want a shirt that's made of real cotton or something artificial? Cotton is always going to cost you more because it's real. Mm -hmm. Okay? So. If the real, if the artificial comes out, that's going to elevate the real. So I have no problem with that. Okay. Because <laughs> we're going to always stay on the real. So if artificial comes out, that's a lower class. I agree. Yeah. So I, yeah. artificial will always be lower. Okay. The real will always maintain its own value. I guess the issue that's happening right now is that people can't tell the difference between the two. I know. But it's still, you're going to say, this one is signed by a real person. This one's made by a shape machine or a computer. Okay, the value will it takes. Because the artificial is, main, main, is only done to make sure the populace get a chance to own something that resembles the real. Okay. Okay, and that's the whole thing. Real, what is the artificial? Is 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 an artificial version of the real? Yeah. So I think the real will always have its place. It's just like a car. You got a lot of lower valuations of cars, but if you can afford the elite, what is it, Mercedes or yeah. something, or Rolls Royce, Rolls Royce? Yeah. Well, it's always going to be the 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 desire. Okay. This is down here, it's the artificial. I would say the more the artificial comes in, okay, the better for for you know artists like me. Okay. Okay. And our prices will go up. Okay. Because these people that are buying the artificial are always gonna de still desire the real thing. Gotcha. As they move up the economic ladder. Because everybody's doing this down here, the artificial. Yeah. Okay. When you separate yourself, that means you're doing better. Gotcha. Do you think the artificial will saturate the market? Yeah. Okay. Just like anything else in, okay. the, in our market. Artificial will saturate the market, and then it's going to elevate the real. Okay. And the real gets more value. More value. That's the, that's the name of the economics in America. I love it. Value. Yeah. So, I, I love it. So come on, artificial. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You're not scared. You're not worried no, about it. No, no, okay. no. Cause okay. I'll still, I, I'll maintain the quality and the real. Okay. And because of the artificial will, will be, there'll be, uh, people, these people on the artificial market are going to be desired to go up. Okay. You always pursue for the better quality. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's the way life is. You go through life, you, you, you buy, buy cheap shoes because that's <laughs> all you can afford. Pay less. But you can't wait till you get a better job. So do you do what? Get better shoes. <laughs> that's right. Get those Stacey Adams. That's it. <laughs> so that's where we at. We're going we're gonna to maintain that because we understand the, how our system works. And that's why, we, that's why it's art, real art, original art. And then see, remember I told you what we did, reproductions? Mm -hmm. Guess who that was for? For the people who can afford it. Who couldn't afford the originals. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we, we're practicing just what you just demonstrated in our business. Mm -hmm. That's what we do. Because we, but we, but our, our collectors, they start doing the limited editions. And Elaine can tell you, our collectors, they'll buy limited editions for five or six years, and now they only want nothing but original. Oh, they're ready for the big boy yeah, stuff. because they, they move up the economic ladder. Okay. Okay, and that's the way our society is structured. You know, what's going on right now, do you, to do the artificial stuff, that's, that makes sense. Okay? But it gives people something to dream for. Okay. 
Okay. So I love it. So be it. Let it happen. Uh, I want to talk some music with you. Okay. Um, are you a jazz man? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, do you have favorite artists that you like to listen to? <sighs> mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, I, I some of the, some of the crazier stuff, jazz. Okay, like uh, Weather Report or something. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Some some some, some that's a cutting edge, but uh, headhunters. Yeah. Okay. But uh, but for the most part, uh, I'm a Elaine can tell you I'm, I'm more of a contemporary music type guy. Okay. Uh, um, a normal, normal music. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What well, can you give me an example of some contemporary music type of guy? You mean artists? Uh, what what contemporary piece we we listen to a lot, Elaine? Kendrick Lamar. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of them. <laughs> he likes Kendrick Lamar. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. You know we listen to all music. Okay. Yeah. We're blues people. Yeah. Oh, blues people. Mm -hmm. We listen to um, your band Morrison. We listen to your Sam Smith. Yeah. Okay. A lot of cutting we edge stuff. To some Chris Stapleton. Um, okay, he's got some songs. Yeah. 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 And, uh, Larry, Gary Clark. Junior. Yeah. Okay. We listen to. We appreciate all music. Mm. Okay. I was speaking with um, Chooks. He's a sculptor out in. Yeah, um, Chooks. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I spoke with Chooks, and um, shout out to you, Chooks. Did you interview him? I did. Yeah. And. Um, he was talking about how, you know, he'll put on different music when he's sculpting uh -huh. and it kind of like gives him like different kind of concepts and different ways of approaching. Do you listen to music when you're painting? Yeah. And does it kind of help inspire and shape the way you're oh, most creating? Definitely. It's, the, it's the mind frame that it puts you in. Um, and it kind of, uh, you know, the, the creative mind works in multifaceted forms. So, so as as you're creating, it's the environment is is very important. But you, but the best way to create is with no no uh, no interference at all. Okay, the best way to create is complete silence. Okay, but if you bring any kind of music in, it has to be. Something that doesn't interfere, interfere with your creative process. So that creative process has got to have a, a perfect blend of every environmental blend to, to make you, to help you concentrate. Okay. So you're not going to, you're not going, so I couldn't uh, create with um, rock music. I was going to say like heavy metal. Heavy metal or rock music. <laughs> Great with that. Gotcha. Okay. Just couldn't like be in a yeah. peaceful state. It has, yeah, it's got to be a peaceful, m melodic uh, environment. Um, I, I love that. Um, what is it? I love how like um, life creates art and art supports art. Like mm -hmm. some people be like, man, you know, I, I saw this piece and it inspired me to make this song, mm -hmm. you know, or like I heard this song and it made me want to do this piece. I mm -hmm. just, I just love how like art mm -hmm. supports each other in yeah, life as well. Um, how, let's see, I don't even know how to put this together the right mm -hmm. way, but how um, was the approach um, and what was your thoughts when Fox Searchlight came to you mm -hmm. to make the piece for the, the Black Madonna piece for the, you know what I'm talking about for the movie? Yeah. Uh -huh. how, how was that? How was Secret that experience? Life of Bees. The Secret Life of Bees. How was that experience? And uh, what was your thoughts Queen, when they came? Queen came to me. Queen Latifah. Yeah. Okay. And um, she was she was one of my collectors. Okay. Okay. Shout out to you, Queen Latifah. Yeah. So, huh? I was saying shout out to her. Oh yeah. Yeah, giving her <laughs> yeah, giving her some okay, praise. Yeah. 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 So she taught she talked to my wife Elaine and and uh, we uh. Actually, uh, did some really soul searching to come up with that image with her uh, producer um, and some of the other creative people in, in the organization. Okay. Secret Life of Bees. Yeah, yes. Secret, uh, Secret Life of Bees. And took, took a lot of uh, 
blending of minds to coming up with this, this one image. I think we had about three or four different selections and they finally selected one. And then the good thing about it, they put us on a tour with the film. Okay. Okay. So we were able to relate uh, the creative process of c coming up with the Madonna uh, as part of the presentation. Okay. Yeah. You said soul searching. Can you explain that a little bit more? Well, um, the Madonna image, um, we had to understand uh, what that meant in the film. Okay. And what was the best image to um, illustrate that particular uh, uh, image they, want, they, they wanted. So we had to really understand the picture in more profound ways than somebody just watching the film. Okay. Okay, in order to do that. So it took a lot of uh, thought processing. It was more than just creating a, an image. Okay, I think we created two or three images before we finally got to one that they accepted. Okay. Yeah. The producers and stuff right, like that. Right, right, right. Okay. So they already had, obviously, they had something in their mind, and we had to dig into their heads and find out what that was because they couldn't draw it for us. <laughs> so once they saw it, they said, that's it. Nice. Yeah. And just to clarify, people, um, we're not talking about Madonna like a virgin. Mm -hmm. We're talking about... um. And no, he didn't. He didn't paint the Madonna like a virgin black. <laughs> Madonna is uh, a term that they use for the Virgin Mary, and um, the original painting of her is actually of dark skin, and they have it in Spain to this day. Um, it's only recently they changed it over to light skin. So the, originally, the Madonna is usually Madonna and Child, which is basically Virgin Mary and Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, what we're seeing in modern culture is that being white. But if you go to Europe, which is like 14th century, mm -hmm. they'll have pictures and imageries and figurines of what they what we call the Black Madonna. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, just want to clarify that for that for people who may not know, mm -hmm. um, he's like painted Madonna black. <laughs> no, 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 the Virgin Mary. Well, um, yeah, well the, the process of doing things like that for film in uh, in the music industry mm -hmm. takes a lot of uh, takes a lot of. Um, conversations with because uh, I remember when we were doing things for the music industry like Ramsey Lewis and his his CD covers mm -hmm. we did and er, their urban night series okay I had I had to understand what Ramsey meant by urban nights okay okay and he told me the story about the young men in his community had to take the responsibility of adapting to the codes of the urban night, of the nights of old. Okay. And that was to, to put their efforts to their communities first. Okay. So he says the only way that we could solve the problems in our inner cities was to be like the urban nights of old. Okay. Okay. So, and that, that helped me. Uh, come up with the right proper images for them. Gotcha. And what was yeah. the the image that you came up with? Well, they were like um, uh, images that incorporate some of the um, motifs of um, of the knights of old. Okay. Okay. And blend that with urban. With the urban area. Yeah. Got gotcha. you. Is there any other people that you've worked with besides? Um, you know, like any other people, like in the music industry or the entertainment industry that you've done artwork for? Oh, the, the religious uh, industry. We've done work for... Uh, GRP Records. GRP Records. Uh, uh, a, lot, a lot of record companies, but... Um, uh, Rhino. Rhino Records. Okay. Uh, let me see. Who else have we done images for um, in a commercial sense? Um, some corporations. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, and some, um, some just some organizations. Okay. Okay. They just want the work. Yeah. I love uh, it. Yeah. Is there um, something that you haven't done yet that you want to do? Hmm. Not yet, but I'm open for 
any any challenges. Gotcha. You know, because I'm always looking for ways to incorporate art into. Uh, gotcha. So um, that's uh, other than painting murals on buildings. I have no. Mm -hmm. uh, have you done I, any I'm murals? Open for anything? I've have, never done. I've never done a mural. On a, you hear that? folks? Mr. Charles Biz wants to do a yeah. mural, so <laughs> no. That, that's what's that's one thing I, I've been asked to do. Oh, you've been asked to do? Okay. Okay. I'm a, um, and even though you know some of my friends have done murals in airports and um, on the side of large skyscrapers and stuff like that. No, nah, I don't. I don't want to do that. Oh, you don't want to do it? No interest? No, no interest. Oh, okay. No. Okay. No. no. Um. I remember when I was looking through your artwork and I was mm -hmm. going through these questions, um, one of the things I was wanting to ask you, would you ever be interested in doing like a, a comic book series or like an animate, animated mm -hmm. series with your type of artwork? Mm -hmm. Have you ever considered something like that? No. And that's along with um, uh, murals and comic strips. <laughs> I have no desire <laughs> Gotcha. What about animated? No. no? I had never thought about an animated. I I grew up in a uh, an, in a uh, culture that had a lot of cartoonists and uh, mm. art, uh, artists that went that way. Okay. Uh, and but I had no desire to, to go that way. Okay. I wanted to you know remain unique, one of a kind, that kind of thing. I love it. Yeah. Um. So, uh, Mr. Charles Bibbs, what current projects are you working on? Oh. You know what? Um, they come and go on a, on a regular basis, um, but mostly commissions. Okay. Uh, but we keep busy just doing our own reproduction business. So creating things that have community and social interests, okay, and marketing it and publishing it. And selling it at the going rate. Okay. So we create a product for the open market and we treat it, we don't treat it as per se uh, like precious art. We, pre we treat the art as a commodity to be open, to be sold on an open market for nothing more than money. Okay. Okay. And it has this artistic appeal and it has appreciation. So when you buy our art, it may be cost a dollar today, tomorrow it's going to cost a hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we make sure that the art that we put out is appreciable. Okay. And outside of putting out posters. Now we do a lot of things to represent events like a jazz festival and stuff like that, but we don't expect that to appreciate. That is a commodity to be uh, uh, used as a sales tool. Okay. Okay. Not as a personal investment. Most of our art is is investment. Mm -hmm. Okay. You in when you buy our limited editions, it's an investment. Yeah. You, you buy it with the hope that it's going to appreciate and it's going to improve your bottom line. I love it. Yeah. Do you have any events coming up? Oh, I don't think we have. What do we have on the agenda, Elaine? The round, your biggest oh, show of the year. My biggest show of the year, which is uh, called um, Sacred. Sacred Spaces. Okay, it's going to have. Oh, I don't know about maybe for art. Okay. In this collection, that's going to be housed at and and it and it presented at the Riverside Art Museum. Uh, they're going to, they're, we're going to use two thir two thirds of the museum, all of my collection. Okay. And my collection involves not only my work, but the, the artists that I've purchased. Oh. Okay. So it's a complete collection of my art collection rather than just my work. Gotcha. Okay. It's going to be the biggest exhibition of African-American art in the history of Riverside. Okay. Um, I'm saying that it's going to be 
in the history of the Inland Empire. Let's put it out there. Yeah. But uh, the um, sacred spaces comes from a concept. And it's might something that you might want to yeah, take in consideration um, and embellishing on, on the program is that what I tell artists that the biggest opportunity for you is not in museums and it's not in art galleries, okay? It's in people's homes. That's, that's the stage you should be going after, okay? In today's climate, social media, okay, you have the ability to go direct. You don't need a gallery anymore. You don't need local galleries in local communities to present your work. You can go online and guess what? Your, your permanent place from your, for your art becomes the walls in people's homes. Yeah. Now look at the, now I told him, look at the opportunity. How many homes are in America? Literally billions, mm -hmm. okay? Multiply that times the walls in those billion homes. That represents your opportunity. A lot of artists looked at that and says, they never thought about it that way. They always relegate themselves to somebody representing them, okay, and they're, they're trying to sell to some key people here and there, and they're sitting at home starving, waiting for something. Mm -hmm. The, you know, if people just stop and just look at reality, okay, the end, the end place for your art goes on a wall. Yeah. How many walls are available? Endless, technically. Endless. So that's your opportunity. But see, a lot of artists never saw it that way. That's where I am, that's where people are listening to me now because I explained it to them that way. And they never heard it explained that way. Yeah. And that's the reality of it. And social media and things that are happening in our technical world is, is pushing the middleman out of the picture. Mm. Now people are able to go direct, yeah. direct marketing to the source, to the end users. Yeah. Okay. So that's where art is going. Gotcha. That's where, that's why, that's what I tell young artists. Okay. And they're going crazy. Awesome. Okay. Is the, um, is this event, the sacred spaces, is it going to be in November? When's the, it starts uh, in... Um, opening reception November the 4th. Yeah, November the 4th. November the 4th. Okay. Mark down your calendars, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> um, number one, congratulations for that. Okay. Um, is the, at the RAM, right, you said? Right. Is that the same as the Cheech? Or is yeah. that... Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure it's the same one. Um, so, Mr. Bibbs, let's say 100 years pass by, 250 years mm. pass by... Um, what would you like your empire to look like? Meaning whether it's involved in art, family, philanthropy, what would you like your empire to have looked like? Oh, I would, I would like for people to remember how people, I would like people to remember me. How would you like your empire to look? Oh, well, as an, as an established history Okay, in other words, I would like my art to represent uh, a phase in an artist's life that made changes, okay, that made, uh, that allowed people to look at the way they looked at their art career differently, okay. Um, not, not up to this point, it's been very traditional for artists, okay, but what we have established in the last 30 years is a different way for artists to manipulate their works, okay? And it was not a whole lot of artists that did that. It was me and about maybe 10 other artists, okay, that were, had pioneered that, okay? So 20 or 30 years from now, I like to see artists look at that trend 
as something that made a difference in their lives. Okay, a whole different way of looking at the possibilities for their creative genius to be manipulated in our society. Ooh, love it. Yeah. Super awesome. Right. Um, Charles Bibb, thank you so much for being on The Empire. Well, thanks for inviting me. Man, I'm, I'm glad, you, glad you made it out here nice and safe. Um, can you please tell everybody how they can find you, support your art, and uh, just know how to do all those things? Can you tell everybody how to do that? Oh, go on social media. How what can they you? find you? Charles Bibbs, artist. Okay. And it all comes up. But my, my web, website is cbibs.com. Okay. cbibs.com. Gotcha. And you have uh, Instagram? I don't know. Yeah, I, I think, think you do so. have an Instagram. I, I do? Yeah. I do. I don't. The only thing I know is cbibs.com. But I have, I have a family that's very supportive, and they do a lot of, a lot of uh, surrounding work for me. My His wife... Lot. Yeah. Carmelo does a lot more. Yeah. 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 We yeah. have a we have a pretty uh involved staff. Yes. It, my organization is not just Charles Bibbs, it's family. Yes. Yeah. Yes, and uh, um he does have an Instagram. I think it's Charles Bibbs Art, I think. Uh but yeah. it'll be in the description so that way you guys can find it and stuff like that. You do have another painting right here that people can't see. Do you want to show the people really quick and talk yeah. a little bit about it? Do we of have course. time to do that? Okay, you want to show it? I just want to get in there. You okay. can grab it if you want. Oh, okay. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah, he's got another. We, yeah, we can see this amazing one right here. Well, this, is a, this is one I did in honor of uh, our first African American president. Reflections. Okay. And it's called Reflections. Okay. You think I gotta and, bring it in closer uh, to you. Huh? I think I gotta bring it in closer to you. Okay. Yeah, there you go. And we have a, a female here, uh, and she's holding a, the promise. Sorry. You know, the promise where that every every man is judged by the color of his skin, judged by not by the color of his skin, but his character. And this is a realization of that that creed when we our first African American uh, president. Okay. Yeah. I think you might. You might yeah. Can you can you lift it up and hold it to the? Nice. And we'll take a picture of it and I'll put it on there so you guys can get a really good shot of it. Yeah. But it's got Barack Obama, Barack Hussein Obama on the on the bottom of her thing. Yeah. Beautiful. Awesome. Best seller. Sold out. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sold out. You can't get this nowhere. Gotcha. It's all in people's homes. Uh, so again, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank Mr. Charles Bibbs for being on. I want to thank all you guys for being in tune with us. We learned a lot. We learned how, you know, his pop said, don't be broke. You want to do this music <laughs> thing? Don't be broke. How he's got an amazing supportive wife, Elaine, who's, uh, in my opinion, the backbone to this thing. Oh, she she's, she's the backbone to this thing. He does all the creative stuff. And she's like, okay, we got to do this, this, and this. Um, and so I want to thank her as well. And um, we learned a lot about his process of his art, about how he's not just a painter, he's a multimedia artist. So he combines all these things to make his great art. And so um, other than that, my name's Antonio Lee Miles. Yes, ma'am. Can you read the reception is going to be from 6 to 9 at the round on November the 4th, the opening? All right, so um, like I was saying, Miss Elaine's the backbone over here. She caught me mid-sentence. And um, so just to let you guys know again, um, one of the biggest events that's going to be happening for the African-American art in the Inland Empire will be at the Ram Museum, which is the Riverside Art Museum. And it'll be from November the 4th of this year, which is 2023, all the way to March, correct? Uh, 2024. And so, you know, mark your calendars, put that in there. I also have all the description in there, and I'm certain they'll probably have it on their website and their Instagram, social media, which I'll also have in the description for you guys to, to follow, check up on them and all that good stuff. And uh, yeah, we had a good time. We learned a lot, you know, and, um, you know, he's, Mr. Charles Bibbs is doing work to represent the African-American experience. 
Uh, thank goodness he doesn't have any twerking pictures. But you know, who knows how much that would sell? You know, but uh, you know, um, I think I think his Don't style. Give me no ideas. I know. Okay. Maybe it might be his bestseller. He might he might outstage Basquiat with that one. Who knows? Um, but in my opinion, he's doing a bunch of elegance. He's he's showing uh, Black American and Afro American people in an elegant style, and um, that's what I think he's trying to represent and bring an uplifting culture and positivity to our culture. Culture, just like um, the great man Bill Cosby did through his efforts and stuff like that. So I want to thank you guys all. Uh, please like the video, subscribe if you haven't. If you want to support the channel, you can do our cash app, which is dollar sign T-H-E-E Empire Podcast. And other than that, we'll catch you guys in the next episode. Peace. All right. And that's man, it. That was very nice, man. Mm -hmm. That was interview. a wonderful I forgot that I had to get out of here, but I already text told them that we're running behind. See what I'm saying? But that was excellent. Thank you.